Researchers and deep tech startups can tap on fresh funding and mentorship under what's called the new Breakthrough Energy Fellows Southeast Asia program. Now, the three-year joint funding commitment will support tech developments that can reduce greenhouse gases here in Southeast Asia. Climate organization Breakthrough Energy Enterprise Singapore and Tomasic signed this deal at the Ecosperity Week. The program will be helmed from Singapore and it marks the first Breakthrough Energy Fellows hub outside of the United States. And for more, we are joined by Mr. Lee Chuantek. He is chairman of Enterprise Singapore. Mr. Lee, welcome. Thank you, Don, for having me. So first, can you walk us through the new fellowship program? Uh, why now and how is it going to drive uh, green tech sort of climate innovation in Singapore as well as the region? Thank you. Um, well, you know, climate change is a global challenge. Uh, many invent inventors and innovators around the world have been working hard at developing new technologies to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, but for many of these technologies to be effective, they have to be commercialized and skill up. Uh, many of the inventors are good scientists, but they are not necessarily good businessmen. And that's when Breakthrough Energy and the Fellows Program comes in. Uh, they provide funding, they provide mentorship, and they provide a chance to join with a wide array of corporates to deploy these solutions. Uh, as you correctly noted, uh, Breakthrough uh, BE Fellows Service Asia is the first time they are doing the program outside of the US. And we are very excited that they're doing it in Singapore. Uh, I believe that BE Fellows Service Asia offers a little bit more than the original BE Fellows program uh, in a couple of ways. Uh, they allow uh, the startups in the program to access, of course, the BE Fellows network of scientists and uh, business mentors. But they also allow them uh, to tap into the Masex network of corporates and investors where they can seek new funding and investments. It also allows them to tap on Enterprise SG's global network of innovation partners, which allows them to deploy the solutions uh, in new markets. Yeah, those investors have to be sort of engaged for the long term as well as this innovation develops. So can you give us some examples of, of deep tech? Because we know tech, but there is deep tech. There is yes. a difference. Tell us what that difference is and how exactly uh, it's going to help those startups achieve what they want to achieve. Yeah. Deep tech startups are typically built out of a scientific IP. Um, they typically require many years of development. Uh, they have a higher degree of uncertainty, uh, but they also typically have a higher payoff if they are successful. So the investors into deep tech uh, need to A, understand the science, B, have the patience investment to last through that long horizon, and thirdly, also have to have the network to allow the investor and the science to be deployed uh, and, and tested in various environments. Yeah, so like high risk, high reward in, in a sense. Uh, talk to me about the challenges, though, that you anticipate uh, and the limitations in climate tech innovation today. The biggest challenge uh, is not really the technology. The, the biggest challenge in it is the ability to to test the technology and then to scale it. Uh, because a lot of the technology are novel, uh, they uh, tend to be expensive at the start, but, and they only make commercial sense after they have reached a certain scale. So how do we get them over that hump so that they can then eventually be scaled up? Uh, and this is where I think uh, BE B Fellows Program, the Marcy and ourselves, can come in and help remove those initial barriers and help them succeed. Mm. In this space, we often talk about the talent pool that's available mm -hmm. locally as well as from overseas to come to Singapore to support all of this as well. I know Enterprise SG has been doing a lot of ongoing work in this field. Can you talk to us about that? How Enterprise SG is actually going to drive growth in growing, helping to build this talent pool? Yeah. Um, well, I believe the fundamentals are already there. Um, we have committed... Uh, public funding to R&D for more than three decades. Uh, and there's a, now a deep pool of uh, scientists doing research in Singapore. Uh, secondly, there is also a deep pool of uh, venture capitalists here. Um, we have about 400 or so VC funds operating out of Singapore. And thirdly, we also have a large 
number of uh, multinationals operating here and many of them do have corporate labs here and they work together with the researchers to develop the science. So the fundamentals are already there. Uh, what we want to do uh, over the next decade or so uh, to build out this system is two, two things. First, uh, we want to bring in more specialized investors. Uh, and they tend to be very specialized in specific areas that they're passionate about. So Breakthrough Energy is, of course, very uh, interested in climate tech, but we have others who are interested in life sciences, uh, finding cures to diseases and cancers and so on. Uh, and we also want to be able to build bridges so that the startups in Singapore are not limited by the constraints of our market, but actually be able to deploy their technologies in bigger markets overseas. Uh, for example, in life sciences, we have been building partnerships with many hospitals around the world so that the, the therapeutics and the diagnostics developed here mm -hmm. can then be test-baited and sold elsewhere. There's so much that we can achieve with collaboration. Mr Lee, thank you very much for talking to us about this three-year funding commitment. I've been speaking there to Mr Lee Chuante. He's chairman of Enterprise Singapore. Thank you. Thank you, Don.